Circassian nationalism is the desire among Circassians to re-establish an independent Circassian state in Circassia, which lost its independence in the Russian-Circassian War. Many of its themes involve the repatriation of diaspora Circassians and the revitalization of the Odig language. Historical context Circassia and the Circassians before the Russian invasion The Circassians were known to inhabit their homeland since antiquity. They formed many states throughout time that were known to the outside world, occasionally falling under brief control of the Romans, and later Scythian and Sarmatian groups, followed by Turkic groups including importantly the Khazars and being a protectorate of the Ottoman Empire. Nonetheless, the Circassians generally maintained a high level of autonomy. Due to their Black Sea coast location, owning the important ports of Anapa, Sochi and Tuips, they were heavily involved in trade, and many early European slaves were Circassians additionally, the Mamluks of Egypt, the Persian Ghulams, and the Ottoman Janissaries had a strong ethnic Circassian component, ruling themselves. Circassians have interchangeably used feudal systems, tribal-based confederacies and monarchies to rule their lands, often incorporating a mix of two or all three. Circassia was generally organized by tribe, with each tribe having a set territory, roughly functioning as greater than a province, but less than completely autonomous, more on the level of a U.S. state of course, the level of autonomy varied between tribes and time. Not all of the tribes within the confederation were ethnic Circassian, at different times, Nogay, Ossetians, Balkars, Karachays, Ingush, and even Chechens participated as members of the confederation. In the 19th century, three such tribes first one, then seeing its example, two more very close in time to each other overthrew their feudal governments in favor of direct democracy which some intellectuals, such as Tony Wood, argue the default government for the Chechens, at that time a neighboring polity. However, this experiment was cut short by the conquering of Circassia by Tsarist Russia and the end of independence in favor of the rule of colonial Russia. Circassophilia in the West During and after the Enlightenment, Western European cultures showed much interest in the Circassians, specifically their physical appearance, language and culture, portraying the men as especially courageous a legend that became especially popular in the court of London during the Crimean War when they were allies with Circassia. Circassians were often thought of as being especially beautiful, having curly black hair, light eyes and pale white skin, generally somewhat close to their actual appearance, giving rise to the phenomenon of Circassian beauties. The Italian and Greek presence in port towns had an effect on both the dialects of the said Italians, Greeks and the Circassians around the area, as well as the Abkhazians, if they are to be considered Circassian. The Circassian languages were widely regarded as unique and beautiful by 19th century linguists today, they are often linked to extinct languages in Anatolia. Racial scientists, after discovering an intimate similarity between the skull shapes of Caucasians primarily judged by Circassians, Georgians and Chechens, the most numerous groups, went to declare that Europeans, North Africans, Middle Eastern peoples and Caucasians were of a common race, termed Caucasian, or later, as it is known today, as Caucasoid. Scientific racism went far to emphasize the superior beauty of the Caucasian people, above all the Circassians, referring to them as how God intended the Caucasian race to be, and that the Caucasus was the first outpost of the superior race. According to Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, a chief advocate of the Circassophilic theory of Circassians as the prime and most superior examples of Caucasoid race usually followed then by Georgians in second place, the Circassians were the closest to God's original model of humanity, and thus, "...the purest and most beautiful whites were the Circassians." It is no exaggeration to say that for several decades in the middle of the 19th century, Circassia became a household in many parts of Europe and North America. Correspondents from major newspapers found their way to Circassia or gleaned information from foreign consuls and merchants in Trebizond and Constantinople. The Circassian question, the political status of the northwestern highlands of the Caucasus, was debated in parliaments and gentlemen's clubs. Meanwhile, beauty products got names in the U.S. and Western Europe such as Circassian soap, Circassian curl, Circassian lotion
Circassian hair dye, Circassian eye water, etc. The Circassian is also known to be, somewhat correctly, tall and thin. This admiration developed for the Circassians, especially their physique, but also later their culture, which in some ways resembled that of medieval Europe, such as the feudal system employed by some tribes. Though Circassophilia already was a fad in the West, it took a suddenly different form during the Crimean War, when the alliance with the Circassians of Britain led to a more understanding, even sympathetic view of them, rather than a simple obsession with their physical characteristics, expressions of solidarity with the beautiful, honourable Circassians", became a sort of war rally. Britain glumly observed the Muhahirs Caucasian exiles miserably, only to forget that the Circassians ever existed decades later once their country had been absorbed by Russia. This had a profound effect on modern nationalism, as noted by Charles King. <laughs> Russian invasion, conflict and Muhajorism The earliest date of Russian expansion into Circassian land was in the 16th century, under Ivan the Terrible, who notably married a Kabardine wife Maria Temeryakovna, the daughter of Muslim Prince Temeryak of Kabardia to seal a contract of alliance with the Kabardan, a subdivision of the Circassians. After Ivan's death, however, Russian interest in the Caucasus subsided and they remained largely removed from its affairs, with other states in between Russia and Circassia, notably the Crimean Khanate and the Nogai Horde. The Circassians freely roamed in their native regions for centuries afterwards, but during the peaks of the Persian Safavids and Afsharids, parts of the Circassian lands fell under Persian rule for a brief number of years. In the 18th century, however, Russia regained its imperial ambitions in the region, and expanded steadily southward, with the eventual goal of obtaining the riches of the Middle East and Persia, using the Caucasus as a connection to the region. The first incursion of the Russian military into Circassia occurred in 1763, as part of the Russo-Persian War. Eventually, due to a perceived need for Circassian ports and a view that an independent Circassia would impede their plans to extend into the Middle East plans which were never achieved, Russia soon moved to annex Circassia. Tensions culminated in the devastating Russian-Circassian War, which in its later stages was eclipsed by the Crimean War. Despite the fact that a similar war was going on at the other side of the Caucasus Chechnya, Ingushetia, and Dagestan fighting against Russia to preserve their state's existence, as well as the attempts of some ranging from Circassian princes to Imam Shamil to Britain to connect the two struggles, connections between the Circassians and their allies with their eastern Caucasian counterparts were quashed by an Ossetian alliance with Russia. Hostilities peaked in the 19th century, and led directly to the Russian-Circassian War, in which the Circassians, along with the Abakaz, Ubiks, Abazans, Nogay, Chechens and in the later stages the Ingush who started out as allies of Russia, as well as a number of Turkic tribes, fought the Russians to maintain their independence. This conflict became entangled with the ensuing Crimean War, and at various times the Ottomans gave small assistance to the Circassian side. Additionally, the Circassians succeeded in securing the sympathies of London, and in the later stages of the Crimean War, the British supplied arms and intelligence to the Circassians, who reciprocated by busying the Russians and returning with intelligence of their own. However, this was not enough to save the Circassians from the oncoming defeat and Russian domination. Russia finally subdued the Circassians, tribe after tribe, with the Ubiks, Abazans, Abakaz and Balkars being last. While some tribes accepted Russian rule after being firmly conquered, others continued insurgency, even though Circassia as a whole had surrendered. Russia soon proceeded to order the Muhahirs. Approximately 1 to 1.5 million Circassians were killed, and upon order of the Tsar, and most of the Muslim population was deported i.e., all except Ossete Muslims and Kabardan, the modern Circassians and Abazans either managed to escape or, as is the case with most, returned, at the time after the deportation, as Charles King notes in his books, travelers who searched throughout the area for Circassians could not find any left except the Kabardan, mainly to the Ottoman Empire, causing the exile of another 1.5 million Circassians and others. This effectively annihilated or deported 90% of the nation. Circassians refugees were viewed as an expedient source for military recruits, and were settled in restive areas of nationalist yearnings Armenia, the Kurdish regions, the Arab regions and the Balkans. 
The Balkan and Middle Eastern societies they settled among considered them foreign aliens, and tensions between the Circassians and the natives over land and resources occasionally led to bloodletting, with the impoverished Circassians sometimes raiding the natives. At the Conference of European Countries which was held in December 1876 to January 1877 in Istanbul, the idea of transferring the Circassians from the Balkans to the Asian states of the empire was introduced. With the beginning of the Russian-Ottoman War in 1877, Circassians abandoned their villages and set on the road with the retreating Ottoman troops. Still more Circassians were forcefully assimilated by nationalist Muslim states Turkey, Iran, Syria, Iraq, etc. who looked upon non-Turk, Persian, Arab ethnicity as a foreign presence and a threat. In modern times Emergence of the modern movement The modern movement has its roots in secret societies as well as organizations during the perestroika period under Mikhail Gorbachev. Support Circassian nationalism is becoming increasingly popular among younger Circassians, and to a lesser extent, older ones as well. It is now almost universally popular among younger Circassians, causing fears for the Russian government especially as now the Circassians' neighbors, such as the Balkars, Karachay, have adopted similar agendas. It is suspected by some analysts that even the Republican governments have members with nationalistic agendas. Modern Circassian nationalism is the ideology of several activist groups in the so called Circassian Belt of autonomous republics in Russia, as well as in areas where the Circassian diaspora is Turkey, Israel, etc., and in Abkhazia, which has ethnic ties to Circassia. The widely criticized 1999 election in Karachay Cherkessia where the Cherks candidate was beaten became a symbol of martyrdom, causing huge crowds of Abazans and Circassians in the capital to lead protests. Both Adigay Kays and the International Circassian Organization have declared that their aim is to protect the rights of the Circassians wherever they live and to facilitate the return of the substantial portion of the Circassian diaspora to the Circassian inhabited lands of the Northwest Caucasus to change the demographic structure." Back to what it was before ethnic cleansing occurred attempting to achieve recognition of the "'Circassian Genocide' is also a very prominent movement among Circassians, though it is not necessarily purely nationalist. Another major movement, often tied into this, but more blatantly nationalistic, is the movement to recreate a historical Circassia, the core of Circassian nationalism, with its historical territories, and make Circassian one group on the census. There is a feeling among some Circassians that the notion that Kabardan, Adig, Cherks and Shopshugs all four are separate on the Russian census are different nations as a Kremlin strategy designed to divide the Circassian nation. Many politicians even warn that if this is not removed, that "...dismemberment will ultimately lead to the death of the Circassian nation." Many Circassian nationalists moderates, such as Cherkisov, do not advocate withdrawing from the Russian Federation, holding instead that a unified Circassia still within Russia is good enough. Nonetheless, most assert that this unified Circassia within Russia should have one official language, Odig. The movement to split Karachay Cherkessia and Kabardino Balkaria has won itself the official support of many Circassians, especially in Karachay Cherkessia, where Karachay and Russians dominate government posts, as well as the influential Circassian organization, Adigay Kays. After the crisis involving the ethnic identity of the man who first scaled Mount Elbrus, a group of young Circassians, led by Aslan Zhukov, reconquered the mountain in a symbolic move. Aslan Zhukov, also 36-year-old founder of Adige Jegu, another major Circassian nationalist organization, was then murdered on the 14th of March 2010 by a gunshot in a dark alley. His death spurred another round of rioting among Circassians, who variously attribute his death to the government of the republic, the Russian government, the Russians in the republic, or the Karachay, some combination, or all four. The head of the republic said that his death should not be painted in ethnic terms but this only resulted in the addition of him to the list of possible culprits from the Circassian point of view. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Adigea. 
In Adygea, a number of reports came in August 2009 about Russian Orthodox crosses being thrown off mountains in symbolic demonstrations against the Russian Orthodox Church, viewed by Circassians as a symbol of oppression. The perceived favoritism of Moscow towards the Cossacks is also a major bone of contention amongst Circassians, an organization calling itself Union of Slavs. Led by Nina Konovalova and Boris Karatayev, was created in 1991 to counter the activities of Circassian organizations such as Adige Kays, and prevent Circassians from removing Russians from positions of prestige and power, as well as to "...protect Russians, Cossacks from Circassian control of the land." In 1991, Union of Slavs in Adygeia actively opposed the establishment of Adygeia as separate from Krasnodar Krai as an ethnic republic within Russia, stating that Circassians were only 22% of the populace and as such, it was not fair to the other 78%. The Union of Slavs has called the increasing autonomy of Adygeia and the activism in Karachay Cherkessia and Kabardino Balkaria part of a dangerous conspiracy to create a greater Circassia. Achieve demographic dominance by repatriating diaspora Circassians, and then marginalize or even expel the Russian residents, colonists, in Circassian ideology. It has called for the liquidation of the three Circassian republics, two of which are also shared with Karachays or Balkars, due to discrimination of Russians. Topic in Karachievo Cherkessia. In November 2009, in response to a fallacious news article deemed to slander the nation, Circassian activists ramped up efforts with the scheduling of a mass protest against the ignorance of the Russian government and the Russian people of their rights in Karachevo Cherkessia. However, the government cancelled the gathering, saying it would be banning any and all public gatherings for an indefinite period to prevent the spread of the H1N1 flu virus. However, the head of the Circassian youth movement, Timur Jujuev, said, all the public markets continue working on a regular basis, so where is the emergency? We are going to organize the demonstration even if we will need to wear surgical masks and even if we do not have a license from the government. This is not the will of one or two men, it is the will of a nation, and we have right to say what we think. There has also been a swift escalation of tension between the Circassians and the non Circassians in the three republics Russians, Karachai, and Balkars. While the Russians in Adygea demand the abolition of Adygea, the Karachai have taken to a strategy of keeping Circassians out of office Jamestown reports that, "...over the last seven months, the Karachai majority in the KCHR parliament have repeatedly banned the Circassian candidate Vyacheslav Derev from taking a position in the Russian Federation Council." The time of reporting was November 2009. Furthermore, for the last 31 years, no Circassian has held the highest post in the Republic, as the Soviet and then Russian officials always appointed Karachai. There is a movement, highly popular among both Circassians and Karachai, to divide the Republic into monoethnic units of Cherkessia and Karachaya, perhaps to prepare these units for a merger. There have also been numerous clashes between Karachai and Circassian historians over various historical issues. One of the most scandalous cases occurred when Karachai historians claimed that the conqueror of Mount Elbrus Kishar Chalar in Circassian, Hyler Hakurev in Karachai was a Karachai rather than a Circassian from Nalchik, going against the testimony of the members of the early 19th century expedition to the top of the mountain which he led. On 20 November, a poster hailing the Great Karachai Hero Hakilov in Cherkisk was burned and destroyed by unknown perpetrators. What actually started the protests by Circassians in Karachevo Cherkessia was a news article by the local newspaper Express Post. It denied the fact that the Circassian village of Besleni had saved dozens of Jewish children from the Nazis, prompting a joint Jewish Circassian contingent to protest the existence of the report as well as an outcry in Circassian operated independent media sources. Express Post apologized later, but it was these protests that were planned to be spread to the capital and cancelled to protest the general deep oppression of Circassians. <laughs> In Kabardino Balkaria Intended to coincide with protests in Karachay Cherkessia, Circassian youth groups held mass national protests in Kabardino-Balkaria on 17 November 2009. 
It was attended by about 3,000 people considering that it was limited to the city of Nalchik and the small population of the Republic's Circassian population alone, let alone in that city, this is a huge figure. Ibrahim Yagin, a leader of a Circassian NGO posted a video on Facebook. It featured him standing under both the flag of the Russian Federation and the Circassian national flag, called upon all Circassian youth to wake up to claim their rights and historic lands. He said that, We have been constantly watched, followed, blackmailed for our political activities. But we cannot lose any more, because we have already lost everything. Yagan is then drowned out by a wave of cheers. It is important to note that unlike in Adygea 22% Circassian as of 2003 and Karachay Cherkasia 11 to 16%, depending on if the Abazans are considered Circassian, in 2003, kabardino balkaria has a clear Circassian of the Kabardine subdivision majority at 55%. However, after the Parliament of KBR ratified the bill on land and territory earlier this month, each Balkar living in KBR in turn has received 10.6 hectares of the land while only 1.6 hectares belong to each Circassian," noted Jalyabi Kalmykov, and this soon became a rallying cry at the protest. Ruslan Kashev, the leader of the Circassian Congress in kabardino balkaria declared that if the government does not listen to us we are ready for radical actions. This is the only homeland we have. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Russian recognition of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. The Russian recognition of Abkhazia and South Ossetia is also an issue. On one hand, Circassians are often highly enthusiastic to help the Abkhaz, who they view as brothers, and are enthusiastic also for Abkhazia's independence. On the other hand, however, it evidences a perceived double standard used negatively on the Chechens whom many Circassians supported during the First Chechen War, and to a lesser extent, the Circassians as well. Paul Goebel noted that the recognition of South Ossetia, in addition to enraging the Chechens and Ingush, also radicalized many Circassians against Russia. Because of the mass of double standards, there is a large amount of cooperation between Circassian activists and Abkhazia as well. Circassians poured into Abkhazia to assist them in their war for independence against Georgia, and most websites dedicated to independence of Circassia or promotion of Abkhazia are linked to their cross Caucasus counterpart. According to Western Circassophile John Colarusso, some Circassians consider Abkhazia a possible addition to Circassia if the Abkhaz themselves wish to join. Repatriation Repatriation has been a major issue. The Russian state as well as Russians in general, as noted above, is highly suspicious of any return of the Circassians not in the least because it was Russia who exiled them in the first place for security reasons, while Circassians living in Circassia view it as the only way to revive the nation and save it from extinction. The Circassians have set up a number of organizations with the explicit goal of encouraging return of their brothers. The most notable of these is the ICA International Circassian Association S. Repatriation Committee, which has branches in several countries. Russia has a double-digit official repatriation quota for Circassians viewed by many Russo, hens, etc., as being an attempt to prevent the Circassians, who are viewed as a threat, from returning. On 9 August 2009, Adygea officially attempted to overrule the Russian immigration quota for Circassians by putting forth its own de facto quota, which was drastically higher, allowing many more Circassians to return to their homeland. According to Western Circassophile John Colarusso, the movement to allow and encourage Circassian return to their homeland hence, changing the demographics in a way that is advantageous for the Circassians and disadvantageous for the Russians is one of the major objectives and rallying points of the modern movement. Russia has also unintentionally, in addition to the single-digit quota for Circassians, which is defined as including all four of the census groups as well as the Abazans, set up a number of barriers. According to an essay by Sysak Czech, these include Circassians living in the North Caucasus and the more numerous Circassians living in the diaspora have been seeking a radical simplification of the procedures for the repatriation of the community. Most Circassians who have tried to return have fallen under the provisions of the 1991 Russian Citizenship Law which requires that they give up their previous citizenship 
Live in the country for five years before getting Russian citizenship. No Russian, and pass a test on the Russian constitution. Keep a large sum in a bank of the republic that they try to acquire the citizenship from, and People holding non-ordinary passports diplomatic, privileged, etc. could not apply at all. The situation has further deteriorated as a result of the adoption in 2003 of the Russian law on the legal status of foreign citizens living in the Russian Federation. That measure makes it even more difficult for Circassians from the diaspora to return. Despite official statements from Moscow favoring increased repatriation, the current repatriation regime has been a complete failure by any measure. Additionally, many Circassians in the diaspora opt not to return for additional reasons of inconvenience, losing job and economic well-being, losing contact with friends, etc. There have been numerous instances of murders of returnee Circassians by ethnic Russians living in both Krasnodar and Adygea. It has been reported that the fact that Russia's repatriation policies have shown heavy favoritism to ethnic Russians and have granted very few if any Circassians the right to return is another major grievance, especially considering that the return of Circassians to Russia would aid Russia in its attempts to overcome its crisis of declining population. Diaspora Renaissance In the first decade of the 21st century, the Circassian diaspora abroad has begun experiencing a cultural reawakening. Contacts are being established with their homeland, but also, more importantly, there are now many institutions being founded to strengthen the Circassian identity within the diaspora. For example, in 2005, the Circassian Education Foundation website here, too, a scholarship fund for Circassians, was founded in Wayne, New Jersey, USA. It is, in fact, a creation of a mother organization, the Circassian Benevolent Organization. It has since given scholarship funds to Circassians across the U.S. The organization Circassian Education Foundation has also worked on a project of making a free online Circassian American English Dictionary available here, three, which will then, it hopes, be used by Circassians for their language so they can, in turn pass it on to their children as well as revitalize it. The Circassian diaspora in the Middle East also are undergoing a cultural reawakening, largely due to the re-establishment of contacts with their homeland, however, unlike that in Western countries primarily the US, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria and Israel, it is often paired with tension between Circassians and the ethnic majority of the country, Arabs or Turks. The governments of Turkey, Iraq, Syria, Russia and Iran have all forced assimilation of Circassians and suppressed their culture in the past and suppressed various attempts at past renaissances. Nonetheless, in the past few years, in many of these countries, the diaspora has become much more aware of their identity and active. NART TV, a program broadcasting from Adygeia, about Circassian identity, history and life, is now broadcasting in many Middle Eastern countries, including Israel and Jordan. On 8 August 2010, a university opened in Amman, Jordan, specifically for Circassians to preserve Circassian heritage and culture, with classes in the Circassian language and on Circassian culture and history in addition to practical topics. Russian reaction Russians may view Circassian nationalism extremely fearfully and suspiciously, not simply because it claims a chunk of what Moscow considers its territory, but because, just as was the case with Chechnya, the Baltics, and so on, nationalist movements may result in the loss of the previous prestige and dominance by ethnic Russians, a stigmatization of the Russian language, and the re-establishment of native dominance hence, the South Africa. Syndrome, as a result of tensions, politics in all three republics are often highly ethnic based, and in Kabardino Balkaria and Karachay Cherkessia, the dispute is often three way Russians versus Circassians and Abazans versus Karachay in Karachay Cherkessia, Russians versus Kabardan versus Balkars in Kabardino Balkaria. While Kabardino Balkaria and Karachay Cherkessia's non Circassian leaders have come under fire from Circassian nationalists for oppression. Ethnic Adyghe leader Aslan D. Zaramov of Adyghe styled himself as a moderate who would balance the centralizing urges of Moscow and the Russians against the autonomism, separatism of the Adyghe. Although originally popular on this premise, he soon ended up angering both sides, and Adyghe Kays denounced him as a collaborationist and traitor to the Circassian nation. 
Russians may often view the three republics as integral parts of Russia, especially since Russians are an overwhelming majority of the resident population in Adygea. The Russian government has taken to either trying to silence the nationalism or trying to gain control over individual Circassian activist groups. Analysts, even Russians such as Sergei Markadonov have voiced concern over what they perceive as the continuing radicalization of Circassian youth due to the Kremlin's attempts to control them, and are disappointed that Medvedev continues this policy. In addition, Russia officially keeps a very low immigration quota for Circassians, as low as 50, though the only republics Circassians would likely to immigrate to are those in former Circassia. The government of Adygea, however, has seized the opportunity to override this quota for their own territory with their own version, 1,400 per year for Adygea alone, rather than 50 per year for all of Russia. After Russian protest at this action, Adygea said that they were in fact acting on Yeltsin's own words, for republics to take as much sovereignty as they can swallow. Russia has criticized articles in the constitutions of the three republics discussing heritage, language and the like and labeling them as separatist, recommending they be edited. Some websites, such as Circassian World have published various articles of stories from Circassian activists about them the activists being intimidated by FSB veterans, as the activists claim they identified themselves. Russia has denounced several of the assertions that the Adygei have of their history in addition to Ukrainian accounts of Holodomor and Chechen and other accounts of the perceivedly genocidal deportation to Siberia including the genocide, as false and fabrications and as attempts to throw tar on Russia's reputation, the Cossacks, even more than other Russians, are highly antagonistic towards Circassian nationalism, as it is towards their aims, which include the revival of traditional Cossack paramilitary forces, already underway in Russia see Cossacks and related pages. Circassians believe that will be a tool, as the Cossacks were in the past, for oppression of ethnic minorities and silencing their demands. Many journalists, both Circassian and Russian for example, Natalia Rykova, have stated that Russian skinheads are intrinsically tied to the ethnic tensions in the Circassian republics, whose opinions they perceive as being advanced not in the least by the Russian media. According to the above-cited article from Window on Eurasia, polls showed that many Russians believe the problem of hate crimes can be solved either by restricting immigration or by toughening law enforcement and that confronted with this challenge the russian government has largely failed to do what is necessary to contain it it liquidated a special ministry for nationality affairs it closed the federal program for promoting tolerance and countering extremism and it fails to provide sufficient funds and staff to other ministries to deal with the challenge Furthermore, Putin's current policy for internal division of the Russian Federation is not at all pleasing for advocates of self-determination, it advocates enlargement of regions of Russia. Sergei Miranov stated on 30 March 2002 that 89 Federation subjects is too much, but larger regional units are easier to manage, and that the goal was to merge them into seven federal districts. Gradually, over time, ethnic republics were to be abolished to accomplish this goal of integration. Many people, ranging from Circassian activist coordinators to Ahmed Zakhaev, Ichkarian head of government in exile to the liberal journalist Fatima Lasova, have speculated that Russia has tried to use a policy of divide and rule throughout the North Caucasus, citing examples of the Circassian versus Karachai Balkar rivalry, Ossetian Ingush conflict, Georgian Abakaz conflict, Georgian Ossetian conflict, interethnic rivalries in Dagestan and even the Nagorno-Karabakh War, which Russia also insists on mediating, creating unnatural conflicts that can only be solved by Kremlin intervention, keeping Caucasian peoples both weak and dependent on Russia to mediate their conflicts. Sufyan Jemakov and Alexei Bekshokov, leaders of the Circassian Sports Initiative, stated that the conflict has the potential to blow up the whole Caucasus into a bloody mess with the mass civilian casualties and therefore keep the Circassians from opposing the Sochi Winter Olympics. Moscow plays the conflict scenario when the participants do not have the ability to solve the conflict, but the conflict is absolutely manageable and can be easily solved by its rulers from the Kremlin. In the context of the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics 
The occurrence and location of the Sochi Olympics are particularly inflaming, and even insulting, to Circassians. They will take place at the site of one of the largest post-Russo-Circassian war massacres of Circassians, and on the official anniversary of Circassian genocide. As a result, it has become a rallying point to the Circassian activist organizations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Campaign for Genocide Recognition. Former Russian President Boris Yeltsin's 1994 made a statement acknowledging resistance to the Tsarist forces in the 19th century was legitimate, but he stopped short of recognizing the guilt of the Tsarist government for the genocide. A few years later, the leaders of kabardino balkaria and Adygea sent appeals to the Duma, asking it to reconsider the situation and to issue the needed apology. In the later years of the 2000–2010 decade, the movement to secure recognition for the Circassian genocide, largely taking a leaf out of the book of the Armenians has gained in momentum and popularity. Reasons for this include the location of the Sochi Olympics, U.S. recognition of the Armenian genocide prompting a bill on the Circassian genocide in New Jersey, where most Circassians in the U.S. live and the repeated insistence by Russians that the Georgians committed genocide. Against the Abakaz and Ossetes, in October 2006, the Circassian organizations operating in Russia, Turkey, Israel, Jordan and several other countries with well-sized diasporas sent the President of the European Parliament a letter with a request to recognize the genocide against the Circassian people. There has been no action taken so far. Circassians have attempted to attract global media attention to the Circassian genocide and its relation to the city of Sochi where the Olympics were held in 2014 by holding mass protests in Vancouver, Istanbul and New York during the 2010 Vancouver Winter Olympics. On the 20th of March 2010, a Circassian Genocide Congress was held in the Georgian capital of Tbilisi, funded in part by the Circassian members of the Western Political Analysis Center, the Jamestown Federation. The Congress passed a resolution urging Georgia Georgia to become the first UN-recognized state to recognize the Circassian genocide. In May 2011, Georgia followed through and recognized the acts as a genocide. Soon after, the Chechen separatist government in exile announced that it commended Georgia's decision, and advocated pan-Caucasian solidarity, and Circassians, Georgians, Chechens and other Caucasian diaspora in European countries staged demonstrations to show their support. In appreciation for the Georgian recognition, the Georgian flag was seen flying in Nalchik, the capital of kabardino balkaria which had been a bastion of anti-Georgian sentiment before the recognition. See also Ethnic cleansing of Circassians Circassian beauties Circassian day of mourning Circassian people Cabardino Balkaria Karachay Cherkessia Adigaya Adig people Cabardine people Shapsa people 2010 Circassian Genocide Conference in Tbilisi Holodomor Secession in Russia <laughs>